the left side. What all you see is what we need to see anatomy. On the left side is all the way is the straight nasal tract. You can see. The most important area for endoscopic surgeon is the lateral wall. Lateral wall has so many protuberances, so many eminences, prominences, depressions, so many things which are important to know, important to understand and then dissect. On the left side, in the beginning, the most important projection inferiorly is the inferior turbinate. This is a separate bone. Inferior turbinate is always a separate bone in the lateral nasal wall. And underneath the turbinate, it is enclosing a meatus. It is enclosing a space in the lateral, the nasal cavity laterally, that is meatus, that is inferior meatus. So if you go in the inferior meatus, there is an important anatomy here, opening in the roof of the inferior meatus here. That is the that is the nasal lacrimal duct. See this? The fluid is coming out and I am pressing on the medial orbital area, pressing on the nasal lacrimal duct. This is the fluid which is coming out through the walls of the asthma into the nasal lacrimal duct and coming into the inferior meatus. So the inferior meatus is the only important anatomy you will find in the the nasal lacrimal duct opening is the only anatomy. See, that is the opening of the nasal lacrimal duct, that above. You can see better with your 30 degree on your station, you have provided 0, 30, 45. That is the opening. See that opening? That is the wall of Hasner, opening in the roof of the inferior meter, almost a centimeter from the anterior tip of the inferior tubule. Now, this is the inferior tubule. Then you go behind, this is another prominent, that is the middle carbonate. This is, as I mentioned in the lecture again and again, again, this is one of the most important anatomy <laughs> we have to respect all the time. As long as you are doing sinus surgery. This is the vertical part, this is the first part of the terminate. Then it turns, as you go behind, it turns laterally here to insert on the lamina papericia. And that lies in the coronal plane, that is the second part of the vessel and then this is the third part going all the way behind. See this is behind where my instrument is. This is all the way in the axial plane. That is the third part of the turbinate. See all the way behind right up to the nasal pharynx or the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. This is the third part which is going all the way. That is lying in the axial plane. So this turbinate is lying in all three planes contributing to its stability in the nasal cavity. Now, more prominences and depression in the lateral nasal wall. The first, this is the flat area known as atrium. There is no prominence here. Then the first important prominence comes is on the nasal lacrimal system. This nasal lacrimal duct is formed of three bones. We will show once we dissect tomorrow. Then another <coughs> prominence, see this, the only mobile structure in the lateral nasal wall. That is uncinate process. As far as the, all the structures situated in the lateral nasal wall, that's the only mobile structure. That is important in light surgery when you have massive polyposis and difficult to identify the uncinate and sometimes the uncinate is distorted. You can identify many a time by means of its mobility. Then behind the uncinate is another prominence that is bulla expertise. This is part of the anterior thyroid cell and behind the bulla is the this is the second part of the middle cabinet. Now in between these prominences, there are certain recesses. See, this is uncinate, this is bulla, in between this, there is a linear space, this is hitus seminaris inferior. And this opens laterally into a three dimensional space that is in particular, into which laterally the maxillary sinus ostium opens. So, this is uncinate process, that is hitus seminaris, that is bulla ectomodalis. Behind the bulla is the hitus seminaris superioris, or the retrobullar recess. And this is the retrobullar recess you can see, see, and behind that, that is the second part of the level. So this area is known as middle meatal complex, osteometal complex we have, uh, we have already discussed. Now when we go behind, go behind is another turbinate. See this is middle turbinate, when you go behind is another turbinate that is superior turbinate. 
This is nasal septum all the way between the nasal septum and the superior cabinet. See, if I retract the superior cabinet a little bit here, here comes the spinal sinus. So that is in the center and that is one of the most important anatomy for the skull base nasal septum. So here is the side for the osteum of the osteoid sinus, it opens here and this is distorted because of the dye which is injected with explosives. So that is the area of osteum. This osteum by lies at the posterior end of the set comes this lies almost one and a half to two centimeter above the level of the upper border of the coina. That's the upper border of the coina and it lies above there. Medial to the superior cabinet that is also <coughs> Now when you go behind in the nasopharynx, there is a frozen, you know, yeah. In the, in the nasopharynx there are certain prominences. The most important is the cartilage of the eustachian tube that causes to vary. And here is the eustachian tube orifice. See that is the orifice of the eustachian tube ideally. And behind this cartilage is a recess known as fossa frozen mola. Behind this cartilage is a lateral recess. If I see this, retract this, or see this is going far laterally to the paramedical space. And this is Sosa Rosenula. This is an important anatomy we will show you tomorrow in the skull base dissection. And this is one of the important, these two carotid arteries, Sosa Rosenula, are important you know, landmarks for the paramedical carotid artery. From the endoscope, endoscopic perspective. So this is by and large the nether endoscopic finding on this side. Quickly, I will not take much of your time as we want to give you maximum time for the dissection. So the exercise in the first half today is to show you the basic dissection of the sciences and the draft approaches. I will show on one side and then as you get plenty of time, you can exercise in your cadaver. Uh, once you complete on both sides, you can do a draft three uh, uh, joining together. So, to start with, with any sinus surgery, the first step is always unselectomy. And this is, believe me, is one of the most important steps. Sometimes complications at this step can ruin the temperament for the surgeon, temperament of the surgeon of the entire surgery. The reason being, this is the upper part of the unselect, upper vertical part, and this is the lower horizontal part, goes variably behind into the interior cabinet or perpendicular plate of the LFI bone. And this is the upper part. This upper part is variable in such a Most of them. Thankfully, fortunately, over 90% of the time, this upper part joins the other energy wall and turns medially to inside the lamina patricia. And that's how this gives the medial avenue for the frontal recess also. Most of them. In uncommon situation, particularly when the other energy is too pneumatized or the middle terminal is abnormal, in an IP, this may go medially to insert either the medical cabinet or even to the skull base. And in that situation, if you try to remove the answer, it can give you a distant fracture as a CSF leak. Imagine at the step of uncinectomy, if you develop a CSF leak, is uh, amazingly you know depressing to the surgeon. So you have to be very careful. Now, as I mentioned during the lecture, this uncinect has a close relationship with the orbit, particularly the upper part. And this is very, very important to you know, extrapolate. This is a positive finding. You must extrapolate during the uh, endoscopic dissection. The moment you remove the upper part of the uncinect, you get your lateral, you know, for uh, the wall of the lateral corridor. And the, the lateral wall of the entire phenomenal corridor, that is orbital uh, wall, and that is the lamina perforation. Now, we can remove the uncinate in total. Initially, when the sinus surgery was described, the uncinate would, people would remove with a sickle knife, take the sickle knife and take it completely down. Now, what happens? This is in close proximity to the organ. Sometimes very close, depending upon the CT scan, you can see. The best is we use a reverse biting process. What I will do simply, and you can also exercise, see? Take your process. But for that matter, before I start an instrumentation, a word of caution for everybody. When you do instrumentation, always navigate your instrument with your telescope. See this. Yeah. See this. Bring your instrument 
at the opening of the nose follow with the endoscope instrument and endoscope together when you bring out bring them together so as not to give any trauma to either of the walls in the nasal cavity always inside outside under endoscopic navigation under endoscopic guidance number one then for this particular step as i said for transurectomy i am doing infant you see take your forceps reverse biting open glide into the hyper seminaris turn it little inferiorly turn it little inferiorly and bite through advance it bite through bite through until you reach a hard mode see where anterior i have come close to the nasal lacrimal duct close to the nasal lacrimal duct if you come across a very high mode stop otherwise you can bite through the nasal lacrimal duct and that is something uh you know, do not want at this stage of the surgery see now the moment i open this what i have done this was the ancillary this was the hiatus this three dimensional space is the infundibulum this is infundibulum and see infundibulum what is opening in the infundibulum you see laterally inferior laterally that is the maxillary sinus is that i will show with the angle scope so now this part this part of the ancillary this is the horizontal part of the ancillary you can fracture with your ball throw like this simply with your ball throw like this ye khatam hone do see now again this is a vertical part of the ancillary and this is the horizontal part of the you can take through your through biting you can take through your scissors or you can do your shaver so remove this and give a wide middle middle line cross you see the middle middle line cross so that is the first you know Uh, opening of the sinus to biting of the straight to biting of the just anything for straight there over the so this is uh, my favorite pulse yeah. tools to biting forceps you can use this is a fantastic tool the you see in sinus surgery there is a lot of role of sharp instruments can be the saver
and accidentally you can puncture into the lamina and the into the surgery and then orbital fat from that. So this is the accident. And see, this is the infraorbital cell, but the small infraorbital cell. What does this infraorbital cell do? This narrows the maxillary sinus, you know, outflow. So it is important to see. Your every cadaver is scanned. Before you start the section, give five, ten minutes to sit with the CT scan to know the anatomy on what cadaver you are operating. Now see what I am doing. Taking away the upper part of the accident. So simply. With a shaver. See this? This is a very, very favorable anatomy. See now. See this, everything seen with the zero degree so far. What I see here, that's the lamina paparacea. That's the bulla ethmodalis. See that? This is middle terminal, that is the bulla ethmodalis. We have not done anything to the bulla so far. Okay? That's the bulla ethmodalis. And now, this is the uppermost part of the arsenic which I have left behind. Now, I will change to an angle endoscope here, 45 degree here. Generally, in my practice, I use 70 degree uh, for the uh, added advantages. But yes, 45 will do as well. See now, I mentioned again and again during the uh, uh, radiology part. Just feel free to uh, ask any question or interrupt me anytime, sir. See now. What you need, what is the advantage of 45 over here, the red telescope over here? I told you for the frontal sinus, you need to see only three things. One, the medial limit, that is your turbinate, keep the turbinate in view. Lateral limit, keep your lamina in view. The reason being, while dissecting for the frontal, from the, for the frontal sinus, we are not supposed to transgress the lateral as well as the medial limit. Now, we have to work about what is what is all we have to see is the beak here. See beak, follow beak, and we are in the front. Now what difficulty can we pose with? That is what a cell here. Can you see the cell? That is other than I told you go behind the cell and take it out. So now the things are getting much clearer. You all have to do the same exercise in the simplest way. Never think frontal is a challenge. Accustom yourself with you know, I didn't see this. I am removing the remaining upper part of the arsenic here. Remaining upper part of the arsenic. See? It fuses with the medial wall of the alumini. That's the medial wall of the alumini. Remove all this cellularity to find the beam clearly. Beak is a thick bone. Now I am onto the medial wall of the other lady. See this medial wall of the other lady? See this? Go behind this medial wall. Let me show you. Like this. Take it. Yes. See this medial wall? Go behind this. Go behind this. And fracture everything anteriorly. Can you hold the hand, please? See this? Enter into the frontal sinus. This way, I am right into the frontal sinus. Let me see. This is the supraorbital recess. And let me take away everything. This garbage now. Above the frontal sinus. See above. See about that is the frontal sinus. Now how to confirm whether it is a cell or frontal sinus? I will show you. Yes. See I have taken away this other energy completely. Now again, referring to my walls. See my walls. The medial wall cabinet. Direct your instrument laterally. Again and again I emphasize on this fact. Direct your instrument laterally. This is your lateral wall lamina. In between these two walls, this is your beak. Follow your beak. Follow your beak. Think 
in big is a thick thing, which cannot be divided. C or B? Yes. Where your B ends, go, 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 where ends is the problem. This anatomy cannot be changed. Use the landmarks which are most reliable. If somebody says use this landmark, this landmark, this landmark, that itself is not reliable, you can't rely on that. Being is always reliable, it cannot change. In spite of the repeated sinus surgery, it is going to be there. See this beak, the edge of the beak. Where the beak, step between the middle terminate and the lamina, in the middle, stay on the beak, in the middle, middle bits, between this wall and this wall. Stay in the middle at the level of the axilla, go behind, go behind, go behind, go behind. Feel this thick bone. This is not a separation which can be broken. Thick bone where it ends is the frontal sinus, as simple as that. So sometimes if you don't follow this, people once they open this cell, they, assume, they can assume this as a frontal sinus. This is a supraorbital recess. And see this recess is going above the orbit. This is orbit here. This recess is going above the orbit, that's why we know as supraorbital recess. And this is always behind the frontal sinus. The anterior most is B. The frontal sinus and then behind the frontal sinus is supraorbital and once you find the supraorbital that's a great anatomy immediately caudal to the supraorbital is the anterior cordal. more the supraorbital recess is pneumatized more the anterior cordal artery is pushed behind so this structure there see this structure there obliquely this coming out and going there up see coming out of the orbit and going there up obliquely is the anterior cordal artery why I am saying so? Even without confirming it, because this is immediately called to the supraorbital pieces. So again, for everybody, this is 45 degree, this is the first thing. See, why I am saying simple? This axilla anybody can identify. You can see even without dissecting this. Then identify the middle terminate always you can identify. Remove the upper part of the uncinate, you can identify the lamina. But these three things are in your view. Between the lamina and terminate, follow the axilla in the middle, follow the thickest bone, follow the thickest bone, follow the thickest bone where it ends in the frontal sinus. It cannot change, as simple as that. And I believe each and every participant, every dissector today will dissect the frontal sinus with the same ease. Is there that is, sir, is there that will really make me happy. Is there any relation between the numerators from supraorbital cell and uh, ventilating the artery? Yes. So more it is pneumatized, the more the anterior artery is pushed behind. So more it is pneumatized, the more the chances of the anterior artery running through the median tree. Because this, this artery runs through the thickness of the skull base. More the pneumatization there, less the thick bone would be. And less the thick bone is there, then the artery is, is running through the without bony covering. So that is important. More the pneumatization, you have to be more careful for the anterior quadral artery and it can be running without a bony covering. So again, at this point, I have three things, the beak, the frontal sinus and the, the supraorbital recess and the anterior quadral artery and this is the carbonate and this. Now, this frontal sinus, what you need to do is, for the regular sinus surgery, you need to adequately widen it without doing anything inside. You can suck out, you can touch inside, but actually, actually, for, non for the inflammatory degree, you don't, don't, don't need to do anything inside the frontal sinus. But for the extended indications, now you can't work anything beyond from here, because the obstacle is this big. So graph has devised various procedures, which I'm going to show you once the sinus surgery completes, which makes your frontal sinus surgery so simple. Then you would be doing the entire frontal sinus work. See this frontal sinus work? If I remove this beak all the way, I can see from here to the zero degree that I have frontal sinus. Then it will be, once you have completed your graph, then playing inside the frontal sinus is the simplest thing. It's like a child's play. Once you see everything with a zero degree inside the frontal sinus, mm -hmm. you can do any damn thing. If there is a tumor, you can remove it. If there is a CSRD, you can close it. If the challenge is the excess, you have removed the beak and made it visible with a zero degree, then you can do any damn thing inside. That is the goal of the graph procedure which we are going to do. So, yes. Yes. Yes, a question, very important question from Dr. Asayoni. 
क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन पूछ डॉक्टर जस्टो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन व्हेन इज द लैटरल लेवल ऑफ हियर सी नाउ व्हाट व्हाई व्हाई इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट सी दिस कॉर्डिनेट हैज अ दिस सजाइटल पार्ट इज अटैच्ड टू द दिस मैक्सिलरी क्रेस्ट ओवर हियर द फ्रंटल क्रेस्ट ओवर हियर and this goes above see this this terminate goes above i showed on ct scan if you see it gets attached to the junction of lateral and medial lamella so this terminate goes above to get inserted on the lateral lamella here see this this distance of the terminate this goes above here to insert on the lateral lamella here why why here i am showing see where the anterior quadral artery is going that's the artery that's the artery which is going to the lateral lamella I will show you. I will once I come to the arterial dissection, I will show you the anterior part of the arterial dissection. This is the area where this artery is going and where this terminate is attached. See this. Here is the lateral lamina. So what happens? Once you deal with middle terminate, you can deal with this area anyway. You can deal with this area anyway. You can deal with this area anyway. If you have to dissect the middle terminate, cut sharp. You can do any manipulation over here, but if you do any undue manipulation over here. Can lead to, you know, fracture at the level of the lateral lamella. Basically, so in sinus surgery, we have to be stay careful at this point. So why? That's why I was emphasizing again and again. Why working in the front of the surgery? Don't direct your instrument here. Always direct your instrument lateral to stay away from the thin lateral lamella. If it is a suppose is a keros type three or so with a long lateral lamella, the chances of injury to the long lateral lamella and they have a long area in contact. in the uh, proximity uh, for the instrument it can be to uh, damage so the lateral lamina is where there is anterior quadral artery is running and entering into it is here and it is you don't have to terrify yourself once you are working for the frontal along the beak see i was going along the beak all this is far behind once you work along the beak for the frontal all everything is miles away you don't have to even bother about it once you work along the beak You don't need to look at where you are, your lateral lamella is, where your anterior quadral artery is. Don't don't look to your miles away from this because your trajectory, your direction is different, far anteriorly towards the beak. Okay. Now, having done this, I will again switch to zero degree for your orientation on the screen. Six hundred dollars. Any questions? We will be moving to all the stations when we are uh, operating to help you. Yeah, close to the posterior limb of the frontal. Yes, that's a very important question. Can you give me uh, the angle one back? Yes. This question about the supra bullar cell. See, why I kept the bullar intact? See, this bullar is intact. This bullar is intact, and we can see the frontal sinus. The reason is majority of the time, as long as this bullar is intact, and there is supra bullar cell here, it covers the entire frontal. Now see here, this bullar is not reaching to the skull base perfectly, and the entire frontal artery is visible. What my point? Miss many of the time, majority of the time, this bulla goes right up to the skull base, covering the central quadrant artery, and with keeping the bulla intact, your artery is automatically preserved while going to the frontal sinus. So mostly, this bulla goes far anteriorly up there, covering the anterior quadrant artery. Majority of the time, here in this case, the bulla is not covering the anterior quadrant artery, and we have to stay extra careful. Yes, posterior. Supra bulla cell is always touching to the posterior. And if it is more mimetized, supra bulla cell, it goes inside the frontal sinus as a frontal bulla cell. Like a type three cell, anteriorly, frontal bulla cell behind, touching or in contact with the posterior wall, attached to the posterior wall. No, the bullar cell, frontal bullar, supra bullar can't be fractured anteriorly. Not what is said correctly is attached to the posterior wall. You can't go behind and fracture anteriorly. So sometimes it is driving the recess. Yes. Then you open up the anterior. We fracture the other anterior. That's how we have been able to enter into the frontal. 
in the beginning we fracture the other energy so now back with the zero with the zero zero okay now back with the zero degree and what we have this is the bull x model now to complete the entire x model me i need to complete this this section see this is bulla behind is retro molar recess and this is the middle terminate which is turning this is the middle terminate this is turning here that is the second part of the middle terminate so now what i am doing i am shiva i am separating this bulla See this bulla. See now what I am trying to show you. Go behind the bulla again the same thing. Go behind and fracture anteriorly to stay safe. See going behind the bulla and fracturing it anteriorly. See this. This is your ground level. This is two nematodes and see now wow. if I fracture, see this this level are where it is going to going to go anterior to the anterior point of the artery. See this. This is going anterior to the covering anterior quadral artery. Can you see here? Like yes, and see the anterior quadral artery behind. The pure bone injected cadaver. The bone is supposed to be full again. But a beauty. See this? This is the level of upper level of the bulla which I will do. See this? And see the anterior quadral artery. How much do you remember the bulla? So as long as generally this is what I will say one. As long as the bulla is intact, it mostly reaches to the skull base. And as long as it is intact, it doesn't need to bother about the artery's model artery. And see, artery is so well protected. See what? Visibility clearance के चक्कर में बंदा इसे See now, this bulla is attached laterally to the lamina cutis. Beautiful. Mustafa, who did injections for this? U.S. guys. U.S. guys. That is excellent. They were suited into the latex model. See the latex. Mm -hmm. How can you define the three injections for the adoption? Bulla. So, you open the bulla. Once you go behind the fracture, it will see going right on the other skull jay. That's why you do intact bulla. So once you work keeping the bulla intact, the artery remains behind. This artery is behind the upper attachment of the bulla. That's the most important thing to know. Now this artery is there. See, this is traversing, coming from the orbit, going obliquely in the roof, and going and entering into the lateral labella. Sir, you are asking about the lateral labella. Here is the lateral labella. A slightest stick. Slightest hit and the CSF will come. Now see again above was the frontal. See that was the frontal. That is the supraorbital recess. Immediately caudal to the supraorbital is at. So again, not to forget, whenever you find supraorbital cell, assume that the artery is immediately behind. Okay. And now this is the bulla, the remnant. I can remove. And this is the level of pressure all the way. Tomorrow we'll in the extended dissections of the skull base. We'll do some dissection of the orbit as well. The infratemporal fossa. See the orbit. And this is the maxillary sinus. This is orbit. Behind the uh, maxillary sinus is the periorbital fossa and laterally infratemporal fossa. And behind everything is the parapharyngeal space. So tomorrow in one of the sessions we will do this lateral dissection. And one of the sessions we will do behind the spinoid in the cellular dissection. So this is about the entry point. It took completely. Now the remnant of the bulla you can bring out, or you can shave off, whatever. Shaving is always a better, you know, way to preserve the mucosa. Whenever you use sharp instrument, you actually protect the mucosa. This is functional endoscopic sinus surgery. Once you are operating for sinusitis, where the function is going to be served by the mucosa. Don't pull out the mucosa. So so far, what we have seen, the maxillary sinus below, you can see 
the orbit, the floor of the orbit in the roof of the maximum is minus, the medial wall of the orbit in relationship to the ethmoids, and above is the frontal sinus, supraorbital sinus, this entire ethmoidal skull is. Now see, this is ground lamina. This is the first part of the terminate, this is the second part of the terminate, and this is attached to the skull base. Is this? And all these things behind this is the posterior group of cells. That's how ground lamina is so important. So this is ground lamina. I mentioned behind the posterior point structure, behind the posterior points are going to be the spinoid. And in the spinoid, there are tigers hidden in the lateral wall, the carotid artery, the optic nerve. So in order to protect them, when you go from the ethmoids to the spinoid, stay immediately. And the safest way is. Even if assume every case has already said the safest way how can you can protect is let me show you. See this. The landmark which I always tell surgeons is a life saving landmark. See this. This is the orbital floor, the maxillary roof. This landmark I call it as a maxillary line if you draw it on your This is a life saving landmark for many meters. This, this is maxillary line. So now, why it is important for the reasons, number one, we have to make the entry into the ground lamina to enter into the postural form. Where to make the entry? At the level of the maxillary line. Why? Suppose, if I go above and make the entry, what can happen? See where the skull base is. If I go above and make the entry above, I can easily hit the skull base and disorient it. So to prevent your disorientation, stay in the line of the orbital floor or the maxillary uh, a roof called as a maxillary line and now medially close to where the first part is becoming the second part of it close to where I will enter into the ground lamina. See this. Let me make a window. I think it's just strong. Looks like it. Now see, I am staying medially I am not dissecting post model cell. I am at the level of the maxillary line, stay medially. This is one of the best life saving steps. Stay medially and see what is there? Superior terminal. From this window. Now, what you need to see is what I want to show the period here. This is superior terminate and we know medial to the superior terminate is the spinal ostium. Okay? Why I am going medially here before doing it? Why do not doing this in order to first? The reason being, as I said, if there is over this situation, if I keep going behind, if this cell takes me to, if it is over here, this will take me to the optic nerve direction. I can hit the optic nerve direction. In spite of the over here, any given abnormal anatomy, this optic nerve cannot come anterior to the spinoid ostium. In any given situation, the optic now cannot come anterior to the spinal ostium. So what is to be done the best way? Follow medially. See the superior terminate. I will take the lower one third of the superior terminate without any problem. It doesn't contain olfactory fiber or anything, only lower one third. Stay between the superior terminate and the nasal septum. This is the nasal septum there. Yes, yes. Now, where to look for the spinoid sinus again? Again, why I am saying life saving line, this maxillary line and life saving line? Follow the maxillary line. See this maxillary line again. Where to look for the spinoid ostium? I will look for the spinoid ostium. Even before I have done posterior spinoid ectomy or spinoid ostium or anything else. I am not in post me, I intend to see the spinoid ostium because my optic now cannot come anterior to the spinoid ostium in any given situation. So this way, if you see the spinoid ostium first and then coming anteriorly to the post me, you are 100% safe. Got my point? Yes. Now, the, how to enter into the spinoid? Where to? This maxillary line. This is the, this is the beauty again, again, I call it as a life saving. The reason being, like said, I said, where to make the entry into the ground level at the level of maxillary line so that we don't enter the skull base. Same here. If you want to open the spinoid, glide along the glide along the septum. 
it's not entering, gliding along the septum, gliding along the septum in the maxillary line. See this maxillary line? And I am in the skin. See that? Mm -hmm. Not only simple, the safest. The reason being, this sphenoid osteum is never close to the floor of the sinus. It is close to the roof of the sinus. Suppose if you don't take into consideration this maxillary line here. And for the sphenoid sinus, rather than in the maxillary line you are going to go above, look for it, you will get a CSLP. So easily you can avoid by means of this life saving line again, that is maxillary line. So here, Take two things in consideration. One is the maxillary line and second is gliding along the septum. Just use your periosteum elevator, suction periosteum which you have, glide along the septum and you are in the maxillary osteum. Now why I open the maxillary osteum again, I have not done the process for technique. Because I have a fear of injury, the structures behind in the sphenoid sinus. Now, keeping this maxillary osteum in view, I can dissect everything. Dissect everything without any fear. As long as I am anterior to the osteum, I cannot take any carotid or optic. See now, you can do any damn thing in the sinuses in your corridor. Corridor limited by laterally by the orbit, medially by the septum, posteriorly by the sphenoid osteum. We are not supposed to transgress this limit posteriorly, otherwise you can end up injuring any of the critical structures and now you can decide. See now, my posterior point actually is done in no time, where that too with 100% safety that I am not going to damage, even if there is onodity or no onodity, I will not damage any critical structures behind. See, this is how the posterior point actually is created. The posterior point is like a box, narrow box. Box means the lateral wall is up. Okay. Medial wall is here the superior terminal which is your root and now the septum here. Posterior limit is the spinoid osteum and behind and above the skull base. The skull base now, having seen this, see that is my limit of the osteum and this is the opposite point. Now, having seen this, see this, I will enter into the spinoid from here. From here. Enlarge the wall. Enlarge the spinoid wall from medially to widen the spinoid osteum rather coming from laterally. If you come from laterally, you can be disoriented and, and damage the optic nerve of the carotid artery. And these disasters we have seen reported in literature um, unfortunately sometimes. And this is the exercise, this is our proposition uh, to prevent this injury in any given sinus surgery. And which we have been following at our centers, having done thousands of sinus surgeries to see this, one can always protect the carotid artery and the you know, By this principle, open the postethmoid, ground level, and stay medial trajectory. Stay in the medial trajectory, see the osteum, and then finish anteriorly the entire postethmoid, actually staying anterior to the osteum, and then widen the osteum. Widen the osteum to look for the spinoid That is the interior of the spinoid do that? Yes. To widen this, your point is valid. To widen this is still not to me. See, here the wall was so thin, I could fracture with the periosteum elevator. If it is a thick one, you can use the sphenoid punch, you can use the stem burger punch, or you can use the kerosene punch, or you can use the drill level microtel. Whatever it is, too thick sometimes. This is your nasal septum. Now, widening this is not to me, you have to be very careful. Not to widen it too inferior. Suppose you happen to enlarge it to immediately the nasoceptal branch coming from the sphenopalatine artery, nasoceptal branch <coughs> running in the anterior phase of the sphenoid, which is the, is the principal branch, the vessel for the nasoceptal flap, adapt flap, is going to be damaged if you enlarge it immediately. So, if you want to enlarge this osteum inferiorly, sometimes for the pathologies, enlarge first, elevate this flap and enlarge subperiosteum. Enlarge the periosteum first and protect the vessel. See, this is the vessel here. That is the branch of the nasal artery. If you want to enlarge, first protect the vessel by subperiosteal elevation and then punch out the bone. So, this is about the sinus surgery on this side. This completes the sinus surgery quickly. And the last part, what's the time? 15 minutes? Yeah.
This is the flag which I am taking off. Okay? You have seen the limits now. Can you connect this with this? Can you connect it? So quickly, I will complete this job and then you get on. Yeah, so that you can do why this whole thing. Yeah. His question is why going to the limit of the skin outside, really, uh, laterally, anteriorly. Once you give a draft, opening of the frontal sinus, give widest possible to prevent these skin losses. And the limits are the skin everywhere, I mean, show the limits. No, no, I will expose the skin. We are not going to resect to the skin. We are not resecting the skin at all. I will show you what I intend to do. Don't get confused. Yeah. See this my exposure. This bone is the obstacle. See my frontal sign is there up. The obstacle is this bone. How to, how to get rid of this? Simply, I am using my fabric, this metronic, you know, the stylus bar. This is coarse diamond. Base will be yes. Yes, sir. Can you hold this suction here? Yeah, hold the suction and keep irrigating with the straw in between my telescope. Uh, straight, straight. Straight, straight. Gloves then. Okay, take this. See, no, this is. See like this. Keep that this keep from sucking up. So removing this bone, what I'm doing is the safest zone of a sinus fibula. There's no critical structure in the veins. Once you drill this thick bone, there's no critical structure. The only critical structures we have defined is the first olfactory neuron there. That's it, there is nothing critical in it. At the most, if you are disoriented, lost, at the most what you can give, you can puncture the skin and give a button hole. You can suture it, that's it. At the most, otherwise no complication one can give in the draft because you are away from all critical sectors. See now. See what I am doing? Bringing this V first, inferiorly, and I will define my lateral limit immediately. You will find a change in color as I leave the skin for the lateral limit. Here, here, this one, this one. This change in color in the lateral wall here. That's the outside skin here. 
That is my lateral limit. So you have to first define your lateral limit so you don't transgress it. And then keep going anteriorly. Keep going anteriorly. See, I am working with a zero degree. The beauty of a gap procedure is number one, you do entire thing with a zero degree. Number two, you work in the safest zone. No fear of damaging anything. I'm telescope. Keep irrigating telescope. Yes. This point is different. Yes. Yeah. See this way. Keep removing this thick bone. In my practice, in our theatre, we accomplish with a new work in almost ten minutes on one side. So there are no way to get into the orbit in this position. No, we are above the orbit. We are above the orbit. Orbit is see left inferiorly. See, this is your lamina. Yeah. See, this is your lamina, and we are where I am drilling. Or up. Again, yes, that's a very important uh, point he raised. See, this is my lamina pectoris. This is pectoris sinus. Orient yourself. This is the lamina. And I am working, see where? This is the outside the skin. Here, here this is the outside the skin, see this? This is the outside the skin. Okay? So this is my outer limit. What all you have to focus is this bone. Now my limit, this is my outside limit. Yeah, keep drilling this bone, keep bone. But yes, keep going anteriorly and deeper. Keep removing this, there is nothing critical in this region. Lacrimal <laughs> sac is left below. Sir, the lacrimal sac is left far below here. Here. We have the one much above now. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, sir. So this, keep this. See this, keep doing this anteriorly, there is nothing critical. Graph is the simplest, you know, extension of the structure. Yeah. We can See this skin coming. Follow this skin anteriorly, this automatically will follow anteriorly. See this. That will show you the limit of more removal. Keep removing, you will see your frontal sinus will zero degree very soon. See, just keep an eye on the skin. Turning medially is staying anterior to the 
unfractured fiber. See, that is my frontal fiber. Now, how much I put in? Thin skin. See, no time I could accomplish the draft too. You all have to do this the same exercise with the same medium comfort. See, let me show how much we have done and how much is left. See this, with a zero degree now. See the same frontal with a zero degree now, which you were hardly able to see completely with a 70 degree. Now see with zero degree, see the interior of the frontal. Now how much more want to be removed? See this skin. Let me show you. This skin will guide you how much work is left. See this skin. Now this bone is still left. Yeah, yeah. This all beach has to be has to go. Change to shower for a while. Yes, you need you should be able to see each and every nook and corner of the septa. Ah, frontal sinus. Now again, please. Yes, please. Yes. So another approach described by Richard Harvey, my dear friend from Australia. He described an outside it. What he said? That is good. What he said? You have seen the first one fifty fiber over here. Stay anteriorly directly there and drill open the frontal sinus first, and then come laterally outside. We are going from inside out, seeing the lateral wall first and coming all the way medially. He sees the olfactory fiber, go anterior to it first, first open medially, and then go outside. It's safe. It's up to you. Yes. Yeah, you can see the area from outside where I am. See this area. That is the frontal fiber. This is frontal fiber. See the glass illumination. Yes, brace. Yes, see the skin. See the skin. See what you are doing. See that. See the skin. No, no, no. Yes, yes, no, no. Not harmful. Not at all. Really. So now, last few minutes left. See now. This is the uh, skin. Now anteriorly you can widen it further. How much? Anteriorly, how much medially? See my first olfactory neuron on here left behind. So keeping that I can widen it more inferiorly. See this. See this? Leaving the thin bone over the first olfactory neuron. This is my posture limit now. Medial limit, I can go up to the inter sign and set up. Feels so easy. Yeah. There is no challenge in this procedure. This is the simplest extension of the press. Anybody who is doing press has to do this thing. See this inter sinus septum? Yes. Can you see this inter sinus septum? Yes. That is inter sinus septum. That is limit for the draft too here. Now the rest of the bone I can just still take off. I can take away this entire bone. To give a wide cavity. See, my skin is coming, I am coming to the anterior skin now. See, you are walking anteriorly, there is nothing, nothing harmful there. No challenge there. As long as you are drilling anteriorly, there is no challenge. I cannot do this without the help of Metronic. The state of the art drill. This is simply amazing. And we have done such thousands of such procedures with this drill for very long. See this? 
see this how much of the fruit of sinus is coming up more and more you can uncover find out what yeah this is possible so front of sinus see is a leak arise from this posterior table once you have done this this is your posterior table you can see the leak like in the seal anywhere if you do the next closure is the challenge then nothing else if we move the root the retro molar is that which is going that way yes yes this one the root the root of the yeah yeah what are right and what are this i will i will you will ask for this cell yes this is this is the party wall between the supra orbital cell and the front of cell sometimes the supra orbital cell is much bigger it is coming right all the way and compromising the front of cell is out so what you need to do is remove this party wall Punch out this party wall. See this like this. Use a punch and widen this. Make a common thing. Now see my skin here. Here is still is still this much bone is left. Can you see? The moment I remove, I have a full full wide exposure. So idea was to tell you what exactly is to be done. Now you can do yourself. Now in the next three minutes, I will show you. Tell you what all modifications can, and then you can start your business. Huh? Healing? Swelling? No swelling. No, no outpatient swelling, sir. Not at all. No, not at all. There is a periosteum which is intact. That's why we are using this coarse diamond bar. If you use a cutting bar, then you are not having control. This is two weeks. Two weeks. Second is what we are saying. Yeah, yeah. That is two weeks. That is. Second is taken out. That is two weeks. No, 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 no. No, not taken out. Second is never taken out in the unilateral approach. That's what I am telling you. I am coming to you with the body. Two weeks, lot of. This is two weeks. No, no, very lot of is different. I am coming to. See this. How much you can widen? Wherever the bone is left. Anything between your brain and skin has to go. Anything between your brain and skin has to go. More and more you can widen. More and more. See for easily. No challenge. No critical structures around. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. My olfactory neuron is miles away. See, that is behind here. Olfactory neuron is here. See that? I was walking there. See, still I can remove more bone, but I am leaving here to save time. What is? See, this is skin. Still, the skin bone is left. Remove every piece of bone here to give a complete, you know, widest possible opening. You can monitor in your office with a zero degree. You can fuse with a steroid so directly into it. You can remove any tumor from here. You can remove any remove any CSR, anything. Now this is classical graft to me. If you do this same on the opposite side, remove the intersinus septum and remove the upper part of the septum. That is graft three. Now the other modification. Suppose I have a disease in this patient far laterally. Give me forty five. Now giving you, giving you quickly the I am not uh, just uh, correctly telling you the modifications just for it. Modifications extended graph approaches you can say. See this.
So what happens if I am, I have a pathology far laterally in the frontal sinus? What I can do with this draft tool, I can do then a sinus surgery on one side. See, this is the interior. Yes, see interior. If you have a far lateral pathology, do a septotomy below here, come from the opposite nostril and go with the angulation. That is modified angulation. Sometimes you have a pathology, uh, in the previous surgery, surgeon had done some scarring in the frontal recess and some orbital collapse also that time and completely scarred that area. And it is difficult to go back to the same area and then in front of the sinus. What you can do? Go to the virgin side, opposite side, do a drug to do an intersinus septotomy and drain to the opposite side without disturbing the same ruined side. That is modified. Mini if you have a pathology in the central part only, both frontal recesses are normal. Go in the central part, remove the upper part of the septum, don't, go, don't violate the frontal recesses. Frontal recesses here laterally, don't violate the frontal recesses both sides. Remove the upper part of the septum and drill over the central part, that is modified central law. Now, if you have a pathology far laterally on the opposite side also, suppose I am operating on this side, and patient has an isolated frontal sinus site is on the opposite side also. What I will do besides this, I will do intersinus sinus site. Along with the, uh, the uh, septotomy for a lateral part is not modified as subtotal log. So there are various permutations and combinations according to the need. Yes. Subtotal? Yes. Subtotal. Yes. Subtotal involves. Please do video record. Yeah. Subtotal, yes. subtotal involves ischilateral graft 2 with intersinus septotomy and septotomy below. Both. Now, if I suppose, if I do an intersinus septotomy, take my shaver, remove this mucosa. See, I am in the opposite frontal. Yes. If I remove this sinus completely, my opposite frontal sinus can drain through it. You don't need to go to the opposite frontal recess and do a cat resection. Many times you have a bilateral frontal sinus disease. In one side, other disease also you can operate from the one side and this will remove the sinus septum. That's it. You have a lateral recess, far lateral recess, do the septotomy. So there are various permutations and combinations of the graph you can take in your practice. So it's a time. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm now in the time.